Hi, everyone. My name is Jared Craig, and thank you for joining us for a conversation on housing. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about why Foxborough needs a housing production plan and what it can do for the town. Uh, like I said, my name is Jared Craig. I've been on this uh, HPP housing production plan um, committee for a little bit where we've been talking about HPPs and, and how they can affect towns and why it would be really good for us and what we as a, a sort of committee and um, and group want that to look like. We've got a draft out there. Um, some people have seen it. It was presented to the selectmen and came up with a few questions. And there are six other members of that group here today joining me for a conversation on housing, where as, as residents, we're going to talk about what that plan means to us and what it's going to look like uh, in the future for our town. Um, so I have joining me, I'm going to go by order, the order that they are on my screen. We've got uh, Linda Shea, Jacinta Carrion Williams, Ellen Feldman, Marsha Spetke, Kathy Brady, and Marlene DeLeon. So thank you you, the six of you, for joining us today. Um, I, I want to start uh, by getting to know, um, not getting to know you, because I know you, but I want to hear from, from your perspective, uh, what brought you into the conversation on housing and, and why you think it's important at this time. So I'm going to start with Ellen, if you don't mind kicking us off. Um, what, what got you into the housing conversation? So I have it in two distinctive um, points of view. I'm a townie. I've been here for over 50 years. I actually built a house in 94 on the same street that my parents are at. They built new in 64. My uncle's three houses down from them. They built in 62. Um, so my we all got married in 87, 90, 91, and 92. And my brothers ended up in Norton because they couldn't afford Foxborough. My sister lives out of state. And so that was um, something that we've heard over for years. It's been a problem for years that people that grew up here can't afford to come back here. And as my parents have gotten older, um, there's been a lot of talk of the seniors that the taxes are going up and some of them are feeling the pressure of that. And also they don't want their, their empty nesters and they wanna downsize, but there's not that ability to do that. It's more expensive to get a smaller place or to rent than it is to stay in their home. So um, when this opportunity came along, Paige asked me to get involved and um, it's been very interesting, but those still seem to be the same issues um, 30, 40 years later. Yeah, I, and I, Voxboro feels like a very unique community from, from my point of view. I've only lived here for eight years, but we went through that decision-making process and I think we were able to time the market well and found a, a house that suited us in a town that that we loved then and, and have fallen even more in love with since. So uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts. We'll, we'll get a little deeper into those topics, I think, in a little bit. I do want to hear, you can see Linda's unmuted. Linda, do you mind sharing your thoughts on, on what brought you into this conversation on housing? No, don't mind at all. Um, initially, um, I had a career in municipal government, and I worked in that community on their housing production plan. So when Paige uh, sent out those emails, regarding, um, you know, forming a group, I was really interested. Um, I guess I'm also interested because the town went through a lot of lengths to create an overlay district um, and hopefully we'll have restaurants and other things, uh, places that people can go. And I feel like walkability is important. So I was really interested in looking at what we can do in the center of town to create that kind of a community. Can, Linda, because you brought it up, can you just tell us a little bit more about an overlay district and, and what that, that means to people who might not be familiar with that term? Sure, I believe it's in the zoning bylaw and uh, the town created, I would have been approved at town meeting, an overlay uh, district for the center of town. And it just specifies, um, rules and regulations for businesses and other buildings. Um, you know, what parking would look like, um, how far off the road the building would have to be set. And they're a little looser than like residential areas because we wanted to increase capacity, I guess is what I would say. And, and, and so that, one of, 
I'm sorry. And so with that being said, they'll, you know, we're hoping that there'll be a lot more going on downtown. And so I feel like housing is connected to that, that we need a walkability. You know, I live in the center of town, so I've always walked around, but, you know, hopefully new businesses will draw more people. Great. Thanks for that. And I, I do like that Foxborough is a community that gets a lot of input from its its residents through town meeting and through the select board. So, uh, you know, thanks for a little peek into that process. Uh, Jacinta, what brought you into this conversation? Why is it important to you? Oh, sorry, Jacinta, you're still you're still muted, if you don't mind. Sorry about that. So it's, similar to what Ellen mentioned, you know, um, seeing people that I that I know went to school with that would have loved to have stayed or built in the town of Foxborough, but they couldn't afford it. So they sought other locations to live at. And um, my own insight into having been a previous homeowner twice and having sold my last home, looking for a new opportunity for a smaller home because I don't really have the need for a large home per se and looking to downsize, but haven't been able to locate something within town that would currently meet my needs and I'm therefore renting right now. But I do think there is opportunity for a lot of the townspeople to get engaged in this process and see what other town needs could be met. I mean, we have people with disabilities, we have people with children that are looking to go to school. We have, you know, people looking to size down. We have people that are, you know, interested in this community, but unfortunately are not able to, you know, find suitable housing. And I wouldn't necessarily say it's all about pricing. I would say it's whether or not the town homes can meet their physical needs or lifestyle needs, should it be said. Yeah, that's a good point. I think I think you bring up a good point is that there's not a one size fits all sort of solution here, which is what we've been talking about on on that committee. It's it's been really nice to hear for me personally a bunch of different perspectives. Um, and that's that's what we're doing right now. So I'd like I'd like to bring the next person, which is uh, Marsha, if you don't mind uh, sharing your thoughts about why you joined this conversation. Uh, I've been in Foxborough uh, almost 26 years now, and I live in a development in Foxborough that is considered cluster housing. And um, it's great. I love it. I really would prefer never to leave it. But I live in a two-story home, and um, I have a lot of space in this house, including some that I don't use anymore. So similar to what Jacinta and Ellen have already brought up, I would be interested in finding something smaller, but maybe all on one level and uh, still a sense of community, not a senior housing. Um, in fact, I remember some of the issues that were raised with the plan were that it was directed too much to senior housing. My interest isn't in senior housing. It's in, in a, an area or a, a place where there's a sense of community, just like I have here in this last year has shown it to a T where you, everybody's out walking around and I've reconnected with neighbors that I hadn't talked to in a long time who have all said, you know, let us know if you need anything and what have you. And um, so I would be very much interested in staying in town, but staying in town is a problem. There are huge homes, there are um, expensive apartment complexes, things of that nature. They're not gonna suit my needs potentially in the future. So my interest is in finding someplace that has a, is a mixed community, you know, uh, first time homeowners, young families, as well as places for folks like me who um, are just looking for a good uh, place to be and uh, comfortable with and mostly everything on one floor, including a garage. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks so much for that, Marsha. Uh, Kathy, what brought you into the conversation? Well, as uh, several of my colleagues on the on the working group and folks have joined our conversation, um, I was raised here, so I've been in Foxborough over 50 years, um, actually a neighborhood fairly close to where Ellen grew up. Um, we're kind of in that same same section of town. Um, and yet I too came back and, and want to be here as an adult. So I went to the challenge. I, I, I've been here growing up with a family living in a, in a very family-based neighborhood. Um, as an adult, 
without children, um, I had a huge challenge as I worked from went from renting to try to purchase a home that was suitable for you know a single adult without a family. It took me over two and a half years to find some place I could afford uh, in my hometown. Um, and while I hope to be a senior here someday, uh, it's true there seems to be um, a lot of voices speaking for the uh, family of school aged children, which is very important. Um, we do fortunately have very active. Uh, seniors who advocate for themselves and people who will advocate for them. Um, but at times I feel we really need to have a voice for those of us who are somewhere in between um, in order to allow us to continue to stay with the community that we like or to allow people to come to Foxborough who are looking for the kind of lifestyle we have. Uh, and part of what's important to me is uh, communicating to people that we have a voice the, the regulations that are in place, the laws that we have, the, the planning decisions that are made, um, can we can speak to that. It, it's not foist upon us. Uh, so I attended a, a, a number of meetings. Uh, I now live uptown. Uh, my, my little house is uptown. So I, I was attending meetings about changes that are coming, plans that were being made. Um, and, and that's when I really started interacting with Paige about you know, how do we influence these things and where are the decisions made? Uh, and, and so I, I like to be a part of that and I want to encourage other people to become a part of that as well. Great, thanks. Yeah, I, I, I felt similarly. It's nice to feel like um, as, a, as a citizen, as a resident of a town, that means a lot to, to me now. I'm invested, you know, <laughs> financially and, and emotionally in, in this town that it, it's nice to feel like uh, I have a I have a voice in this town, and this is just one of the ways that I think I get to exercise it. Um, I do want to get Marlene in the conversation too. Marlene, I'd love to hear what brought you into this housing conversation. And you and you're muted too, if you don't mind. I'm muting. I know it's it's tough. All right, great. Sorry for that pause. Uh, thank you, Jared. I uh, want to echo some of the things that my colleagues have already said. I have lived in Foxboro for about 34 years. My husband and I first uh, uh, took a home in Foxboro when we were just starting our family. And then we chose to um, move up and stay in Foxboro about um, 1998. So that was about 11 years later. Um, I don't have any special qualifications for being on this housing coalition committee. I volunteered. And uh, what brought me to it is one, I'd completed the survey early on, but number two, in the course of this summer, I became aware, as so many of us became aware, um, that there were people who were particularly uh, disadvantaged. It became clear that they were more likely to die and get seriously ill from COVID. And I said, what can I do in my town that would make a difference for people uh, who are disadvantaged? And I learned that the housing production plan was in place. Paige invited me to be part of it. And um, I think it's a place where any of us can speak out for those who whose voices are not heard, for people who are elderly, people who are um, in essential jobs that are low paying, um, people who are in congregate living, people who are in uh, crowded housing. All of these people deserve to have a place and I wanted our town to feel a responsibility as, as I now feel it's we have a responsibility to address and take care of people who have been on the margin. That's great, thanks Marlene. I think that's a really, um, it, it's an altruistic way to, to get involved and I feel like I'm hearing from from the group that we all have a love of a love for this town and a love for the the residents in the town, the community itself. Um, I'm wondering if if my next question is is why do you believe that housing matters? So if if someone at home is is watching this, why you know they've purchased or rented here and and they're um, you know fine for now, maybe transitioning at some point, why should, why should they um, care about this conversation? I, I think, Kathy, you made me think of this question. So if you don't mind, I'm going to start with you on this one. 
And um, why, why does housing, why does housing matter? Well, to become a member of the community, really living here is, is a fairly obvious first one or working here. Um, for me, uh, as, as I had the opportunity, I went away to college. I had opportunities for jobs elsewhere. I couldn't imagine living somewhere else because the just the the com sense of community and, and the opportunities I had for feeling comfortable and connecting with people and choosing to participate in activities um, that I had and saw growing up in Foxborough was something that I never wanted to leave behind. Um, you notice people are attracted to the idea of living in Foxborough for a number of reasons. Our school system is excellent. So I understand why it's a draw for people uh, with children and families. Um, it's a relatively peaceful place. It's a small town that still has access to cities um, quite readily, a short trip. You can go to Providence, you can go to Boston, you can go to Worcester. Um, so that geography makes it a very attractive place to be both to live for recreation and for work uh, options. Um, so having the ability to move here and find a home that suits your particular family, get together, your, your demographic um, is very important. And it's important in order to allow all sorts of people to feel that this is a potential place for them to live. Um, that there needs to be a variety of housing options people who grew up in the city could still be comfortable enough with the type of arrangements, but enjoy some something that would be different in a small town. For those of us who love the small town life, but still have access to the positive assets of a of, of city nearby. Um, and, and that ability to move in and out is also important to just creating that community with enough of a diversity um, that that kind of keeps the human side of it also interesting and vibrant. Um, and we can go into all kinds of uh, kind of highfalutin conversations about it, but really it's just, we want it to be a place that anybody who chooses has a reasonable opportunity to sit down here and become part of our community. I like that, that's well put. That really ties housing to community and, um, and Jacinta, I'd love to get your point of view here too. Why, why does housing matter specifically in Foxborough and to Foxborough residents? I think housing matters in Foxborough um, for a variety of reasons. You have a chat, you have an opportunity to meet a lot of people within the community, find out what their needs and wants are. As I have right now, I'm living in a uh, rental area where I meet a uh, variety of different people and the consensus is I would buy if I had the opportunity. But if you think about the median income needed to purchase a home in Foxborough, right now homes in Foxborough are going for like 419,000 average. You're looking at an $82,000 deposit for that. A lot of people don't have that in the bank to be able to put that for a deposit. And you can put a lesser deposit on it, but of course you pay PMI and there are other challenges that you face with mortgages when you do that. And I mean, you look at rental opportunities now, rental properties in Foxborough are, believe it or not, actually limited. If you have a pet, you're limited in rental opportunities in town. You know, I mean, seniors that are looking to rent and have a pet, there, there really is far and few um, places that you can rent at in town. And, the sense of community. I think it's important that you be able to purchase where you have a sense of community. I grew up in Foxborough. I've been in Foxborough since I was six. I've been in Foxborough for over 50 years. Not a legitimate townie, but I think that counts for something. Um, so it's a, so I think it's important. I mean, you meet a, a good amount of people and um, what you can share with the community, it makes a big difference. Great, thanks. I. Time is quickly running away from us. I think it's an interesting conversation. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit, but if anyone still feels like that question needs to be answered, feel, feel free to jump in. I do, Marsha brought it up a little bit, what her specific needs are uh, or wants, and she's not quite finding them. I know Kathy was saying she looked yeah. for years to find what she was looking for. I'm hearing Jacinta say she's not really 
seeing what the kinds of thing that she needs. So I'm, I'm asking, and this is kind of the big question that we've been trying to, to tackle uh, on this little committee was, what do you see as Foxborough's needs? Or do you think it, everything's fine? Um, Marlene, I think you had a, a little uh, interesting perspective for why you got involved. Could you talk a little bit about what you see that as a need for the town, please? It's all right. It's, it's Zoom. Sorry. It happens. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes. So thank you again. Um, the first thing I'd say is that um, I, I want to thank the town planners that we've had historically, because when uh, all of us went through that housing boom in the 90s, uh, Foxborough had a very orderly and controlled growth. And, and that's because we had good, uh, you know, zoning regulations in place. Uh, and I'm thankful for that. Um, but what I've seen, and we've lived here, as I said, for 34 years, is that in the past two or three decades, almost all of the housing built has been uh, of, of large size, 2,500 square feet or more. And consequently, about a quarter of the houses in Foxborough are of that size or greater. And only about 13% are of the size 1,200 square feet. When we started out in Foxborough in 1987, our house was about, I think, 11 to 1200 square feet. Um, and, and we did feel uh, that this was the kind of community we lived in. Um, it was in commuting distance. I worked in Boston. And so we had, you know, access to trains in a couple of stations. Um, and it was a, a place that, that we wanted to stay. We felt welcomed in the community, good school system, as, as someone else has mentioned, and a real sense of volunteerism in the community. Um, and, and we were able to, you know, size up when we wanted to, the, how, the town provided for that. But I think what, what we're, we're needing is more of uh, this starter home size of house, um, because one, the statistics say that a third of our residents in Foxborough are spending more than 30% for mortgages or for rent. And that's the rule of thumb of what maximum you should be spending on housing. So clearly, we're not really serving the needs of most of this population. Um, and so I'd like to see housing that continues to welcome people who are um, starting their house or downsizing as we will soon be. Thank you. So do, thanks, Marlene. Do you think that these issues are addressed in our current draft of the housing production plan, the HPP? I like the fact that we are saying there's a need for more affordable housing. Yes. And I think that what, what the housing plan does is, is lay out a number of options so that we can continue to be um, proactive and plan ahead for the future, not be driven by, um, you know, by by the developer per se, by the by, um, you know, those who are trying to build for profit. But we're thinking about what kind of a community do we want to have? Will it be a diverse community? Will it be one that um, really provides for people at all stages of life and all walks of life? Linda, what do you think our needs are, and do you, do you see that being addressed in the HPP? Um, Marlene, you're spot on um, with your comments. Um, what I like about the HPP, um, and I think we need to make sure people understand this, is that it comes out with it's lots of options, but throughout the whole process, um, you know, it's something that the Board of Selectmen will have to choose. And then there are many steps to be approved before a final product. So I guess what I'm saying is that the voters and the residents will have a lot of say about how that looks and how we do it. It isn't just a plan that says, this is what we're gonna do. And a small group of residents made that decision. It's a plan in which there are steps to be taken. And we're gonna ask the leaders of the community um, to decide which ones you know, meet the needs and, and in which order. Um, and I think that's, you know, a very good thing so that people have the chance to weigh in at town meeting or at the voting booth to decide, you know, how they want to pursue, um, 
this thing. But I also agree that a plan is important because then you can point to a plan and say, we already have thought of, you know, many of these issues and this is why, you know, we're going to go forward this way. Um, and so I, I think that the plan does meet the needs. Thanks. I do want to hear from Marsha and Ellen too. Ellen, I had a question because I think you said you built a house. So that to me says that, that there was a need that wasn't being met, that that you had to find a creative way to, to fill. Am I, am I filling in too many blanks for you? Can you talk a little bit about the needs and if they're addressed in this plan? Yeah. So no, in our case, my husband was a builder, so he knew he wanted to build our house. Um, so we had saved to a certain point and knew, but we looked everywhere. I mean, we looked from Westward to Walpole, um, Sharon. He was from Sharon. I was from Foxborough. And we looked for a long time in Foxborough. And um, we found this by accident. We were looking at a different easement and the woman had Greep's property up for sale. And that's who owned the old house on Oak Street that was part of the Underground Railroad and um, had been there forever. And it. Oakwood was most of that. And we were from the old, off the old neighborhood because of wetlands. And, um, you know, it just sort of fell into our lap. We were very lucky. We've had a couple, we had purchased a couple other lots that fell through. Um, so it was like the builders like, nope. And one of them actually went to build parcels. Funny enough. He came sure. in, they sold it to him, even though we had signed the, and we're like, whatever. So <laughs> But um, so, to meet the needs, yes. Yeah. So people need to realize this is a work in progress. Another important part that I, uh, being a part of this is to, you know, there's duplex zoning and what does that mean to clarify a lot of that? The plan we had in place, because this is not the first time we tried to do one of these plans. We had one from 2012, but that's when our 40B was not met yet. So the people could come in and build the 40Bs that everybody was so upset about. We've now met our quota. And we're actually over it by a few percentages, which is a good thing because you don't know if the state's gonna raise that bar again. So we want things in place, but we also um, want to not have these duplexes. Are they gonna go all over town that they're 450 for each half that nobody can afford? And, um, and some of the zoning has to be changed. And, but we need to have a conversation with the planning board, with the zoning board, on why this is a good idea, why it's not. And part of it is to bring this plan forward with our suggestions so that, and people need to realize they still have a say in this. This is not written in stone. This is our first draft. This is getting everybody's opinion. So, yep. from, you know. Thanks, people. Ellen. We're, we're just about out of time. So I wanna give Marsha a chance because I know that she talked a little bit in that first question about, about what her needs were. Marsha, could you give us a quick rundown of what your, your needs are and if you think they're being addressed in this plan? The needs would be to have more single level housing because everything, including the duplexes Ellen was just talking about, and even the, the great development I'm in right now is all two story. And that would meet the needs of seniors, but it would meet the needs of so many others as well. It wouldn't be just limited to seniors. In fact, I would not want to live in a community personally that's limited to seniors. So it would be something for first time homeowners, smaller on the level that Marlene talked about, 1,100, 1,200 square feet. I'm living in 1,800 square feet and I don't need all this space anymore. I use it all mostly, but on the other <laughs> hand, I think that both in price and in size um, and community, the, that is a major key from my vantage point. As I said before, I love living in a community that's a mixed bag of folks. There are individuals here, there are seniors here, including myself, there are young families, young couples, and I would love to see more of that. Uh, Foxborough did it in the 90s when this development I'm in was built. And as I said before, it's cluster housing. Um, no reason why we can't do it again, just a different uh, bit of uh, format change. Thanks, Marsha. And, and in continuing the discussion that we have, as a group looked at uh, different um, sites for you know taking old buildings and, and refurbishing them, putting up cluster housing somewhere. It's, it's all been talked about in this plan. It's, it's a great plan. I suggest if, if anyone um, has, is interested in this and, and wants to take a closer look, uh, we've put a, a lot of thought into it as, Mel, as, as well as many other heads that are not a part of this conversation uh, right now. Uh, a lot of work has gone into it. 
Uh, this is, uh, I believe, part one of a several part series on our housing conversation. So I encourage you to uh, tune in for the next one. But that's all the time that we have with the seven of us today. But thank you for watching. I want to thank also uh, Paige Duncan, our Foxborough Planning Director, uh, and also at FCA TV, Michael Weber, Lauren Batar, and Paul Beck, as always, for being so supportive. Uh, thank you to Linda, Jacinta, Ellen, Marsha, Kathy, and Marlene for joining me today. I'm Jared Craig, and thank you for being here. Mm -hmm.